Now I know we've made a lot of hooks in the past here at Black Bear Forge, but sometimes that's the project I'm working on because it's what I need in the house. So that's what I'm gonna show you this week. I'm gonna put three hooks on our little coat rack. These are quarter by one, and I've cut them 10 and a half inches long. So that's roughly six mil by 25 mil, oh, by 270 millimeters long. For the back plate, I'm going to use quarter by one and a half by 36 inches long. Don't get hung up on the measurements. You need to adapt to the space that you have to fit a project like this. Let's go ahead and get started by forging the three hooks. We've taken a look at hooks like this before. This will be a ball end hook, and it starts with a little isolated one inch square on the end that will be crumpled up into a little ball shape before we're done. As I forge the taper, I do let this thicken at the end so it's not going to be just a quarter inch square bar where it meets the ball end. I'd rather have it more like 5 16 square at that point. Of course, you can also round it up in the end if you want to. I keep a sample of this style hook hanging on the wall of the shop so I can compare and make sure I've got my lengths right. Now the important thing here is that all three of these hooks are the same. They don't necessarily have to match my pattern, but they have to match each other. But I do have one that is already to the point that it pretty much matches the spacing on my pattern piece. So this is the one I'm gonna use as my guide for my other two hooks. And I've been working these alternately. You've been watching all three hooks progress pretty much simultaneously. Now I also forge these so that they're not symmetrical from the center fattest section here. The upper hook that just kind of gets bent in a J shape doesn't need as much material as the lower hook that gets bent in a full U shape. So I make this maybe 
oh, 20% longer, something like that. Exact dimensions don't matter that much. Experiment with it, see what you like. This is just sort of the proportions that I've settled on over the years. But the next thing to do is to form the ball on the end. Now this is really just kind of crumpled up. You start it at the edge of the anvil and you let one side move one direction and when you rotate it, the other side moves. And you kind of chase it around in a circle like you're balling up a ball of aluminum foil. Now it's going to be full of cold shuts. It doesn't make a bit of difference because this isn't structural. This is just there to present a smooth place so you don't snag your favorite flannel shirt when you hang it on the hook. Now somebody always asks, well, couldn't you forge weld that? Sure you could. You could heat that up to a forge welding heat, at least at the very end, and finish this ball off at a forge welding heat. Now I think you'll end up with a lot smaller ball if you do it that way for two reasons. One, you're going to scale off a lot of material at that higher heat, but you're also going to squeeze more air out of those cold shuts so that mass is going to close up tighter, and you're going to end up with a much smaller sphere. That's just up to what you want. You could start with a bigger piece of material, leave a little bit more when you shoulder it. Lots of different ways you could do this. There's also a pretty big risk that you're going to overheat it right at this thin section and burn it off and lose the whole thing. So I prefer to just do this at a lower heat and let it have cold shuts. Now I just need to make all six of these pretty much the same. They don't have to match exactly though, like I say, it's just a little finial in to keep you from messing up the clothes you hang on this. Now somebody right now is thinking, well how about a ball swedge? Well that's what's in the swedge block essentially is just a half ball swedge, but you could make a top and bottom ball swedge to use at the anvil with a striker or make a spring die type swedge to use under the treadle hammer or the power hammer. And if I were making a lot of these, that's what I'd do. Well, to be honest, I would probably make one that was designed to start with square bar, and then I could just forge the ball out in one step, draw the square bar out to a flat bar in between the two balls, and it would go a lot faster. But for these, even if I had a die under the treadle hammer or the power hammer, I'd get it really close before going to the die, because otherwise you're going to mess up all the flat bar, and it's probably not going to go that well if you just try to start with a square of flat bar, stick it in a die like that. You're welcome to try it. Let me know how it goes. Let's get started on the back plate. All those hooks will be riveted to this, and this is what then mounts to the wall. And for this, I'm going to use a design I've used before. Frequently, I put upsets on this. I think that's a real classy look. But we've looked at that procedure so many times, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Instead, I'm going to offset this to one side over a swedge, draw it out, then we're going to scroll it up good and tight, and on the other end it'll go exactly the opposite direction, somewhat suggestive of an S-curve. And I'm going to start that just over a swedge at the end.
When I'm done, I still want this to be a quarter inch thick, but I want a graceful flat taper to a point at the far end before I start scrolling. Let's record the length so I can get it right on the second one, make a match. I think I'll go to a lighter hammer for just a little bit more finesse. Now I just need to repeat that on the other end. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and forge a bevel around the outside of this before I do any more layout work or drill any holes, anything like that. And I think that's really going to improve the look of the finished piece. And as always, if you put that bevel down and tip the piece up so that it matches the angle of the bevel, then hammer from the back, you end up with a cleaner, straighter bevel and probably a few less hammer marks. So it's whichever way you want to do that. And of course, straighten it and make sure it's not twisted. Now it's time to lay out the back plate for one hole per hook. I want to go ahead and drill and rivet one of the holes, then I'll drill through the other hole in the hook so that I can make sure my holes align on both of them. I'm going to want flush rivets on the back of this so it lays up against the wall nicely. So I'm going to countersink the back of these holes. Now you can do just about any kind of decorative work you want on this. You can use stamp patterns, you can use chisel designs. We've looked at both of those in the past. And I've even done some of these where rivets are used as decorative elements 
or even a decorative bolt is used for mounting and that's all the decoration it needs. Anything you really feel like doing. Today I think I'm going to use a teardrop punch and see if what I can create with kind of a teardrop punch flower element. And I'll use a round head mounting screw kind of for the center of that flower element. The center punch marks both where the screw is going to go and it will give me a good reference point for putting the element around the screw. I'm going to let this end cool a little bit, then I'll quench it, flip it around, stamp the other end, and we should be about ready to assemble it at that point. Do a little straightening if it needs it. Do that to all three hooks and make them match pretty closely. And again, you want to try and bend all three hooks so they're pretty close to the same. You also want to make sure that you'll be able to get into your screw holes. And now we're ready to put this thing together. You'll have to eyeball these for square because they're tapered. You can't actually put a square on them. I find more uses for this flat tapered horn all the time. Really glad I've got it. I'm going to heat this up just enough to melt some wax, put my usual paste wax finish on it. Then I'll meet you in the house, put this up, and see if it does what it's supposed to do. I 
I do hope you enjoyed this project. If you'd like to see another version of a similar coat hook, I'll link to that video right over here. If you'd like to see how I deal with screws so that they color match the forged iron, I'll link to that video right over here. In the meantime, I hope you have time to get out to your shop. Stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.